When I say goodbye in Ojibwe, do I say Giga Waba Min Minowa? Yeah, that's right. Only you don't say goodbye. You say, I will see you again. And I will see you again. Giga Waba Min Minowa. Giga Waba Min Minowa. Ah, ah, ah. I meant, ah, ah. Michael, you want to get rid of that picture? Yeah, sure. This is tough to do when... I can't explain it. Anyway... Well, Michael, you wanna... You wanna talk about kids' books? Yeah, I'd love to talk about kids. Hi, everyone! Well, we're back, and uh, Emily and I have been spending a lot of time at the Bemidji Public Library. The Kitchigami um, Library. And you know what I love about that library? What's that? The fact that they misspell Gichigumi. Um, and they spell it with a K and nobody can pronounce it. Yeah. Gichigumi in Ojibwe means, well, Gichi with, with G means great. Gichi. And Gummy, uh, the Gichigumi means like sea or water, the great sea, whatever. And they call Lake Superior Gitchigummy. And they call the sea Gitchigummy. But we work at a, at a library that calls itself Gitchigummy. Like Kitch. Like, I don't know what. But anyway, they, they mean to say Gitchigummy. But anyway, so that's. So we've been spending a lot of time. I like. Go ahead, Michael. So we've been um, doing a story time uh, three times a week. Uh, Emily and I read different books to kids. It's been really fun. Oh, it's been so great. I just love like having a live audience of kindergartners. Yeah, it's really, there's something really fulfilling about making um, kindergartners laugh. <laughs> yeah. And um, today I wanted to uh, do a couple of book recommendations. If you have a, a young person in your life or not, just as a... Um, as an artist myself, um, I realized one thing about working at a library, and especially in the children's department. What's that? Um, I could care less about any book that I have ever read after maybe the sixth grade. Really? Yeah. I think, like, I, I have um, an emotional connection to the book, um, That Was Then, This Is Now. By S.E. Hinton? Yeah. Was that the same one, same lady who wrote The Outsiders? Yeah. That was my first, like, chapter book I ever read when I was, like, a sixth grader or seventh grader. Um, but otherwise, and I majored in English. Yeah. I read so many just boring, pointless works of great literature, getting my stupid bachelor's degree, that... Um, uh, I, I could care if I ever read another Shakespeare play, read another poem at all. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Um, but the children's books I read as a kid, I still love because it's an art form that's totally un, you know, un, un, misunderstood and underappreciated. Really? Yeah. Like... Here's a book called Harold and the Purple Cran by Crockett Johnson. This book is just simply a story. It's one long comic strip where the main character, Harold, has a purple crayon and he just starts drawing. And as he draws, he like creates a world after a world of... Um, Different things, and, and the, the story, as it's narrated, he just redraws, you know. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. It even frightened Harold. He backed away, his hand holding the purple crayon. You know, this is, this is what a comic strip is. Each, pa each page represents a moment in time, and then it moves on to the next moment. And it is just genius. And I remember reading this as a kid. I never forgot it. 
I, I would eventually like create my own versions of this. And um, so uh, I rediscovered Harold the Pur and the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson. And I think it's just great. That's amazing. Yeah. What's that other one? This other one I would like to talk about is Someone Like Me. Someone Like Me. Someone Like Me by uh, Patricia McLaughlin. Why do you like this one so much, Michael? Number one, it's a beautiful story. Well, number one, this the person who illustrated is Chris Sheban. Chris Sheban. You sure it's not Shaban? Because it was in Ojibwe, it'd be Shaban. Yeah, maybe it's Chris Shaban. But he, let's face it, it's probably a guy. <laughs> he is the greatest uh, colored pencil drawer I have ever seen. Um... There's a nice set of pictures. The story is just, are you someone like me? Someone who likes to do these different things, who reads a lot, stays out late reading by, with the dog. Um, some of these drawings are so beautiful that when I first saw them, uh, I, I mean, I didn't cry, but I felt a welling in my throat, like I wanted to cry. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was just so, I mean, check out those clouds and the way the light um, and the shadows, that's all done with a colored pencil. The style is still very cartoony, but it is breathtaking how good the colored pencil work is. And I... I learned that I, I'm not a colored pencil artist. My first professional job, um, drawing. Yeah. Out of college, I had an assignment and I was, I was gonna illustrate this story. And I bought some colored pencils and I tried and I realized to my horror that I couldn't do it. You know, there's a lot more to it than just coloring in. And that's when I started using markers. <laughs> really? Yeah. But it finally ends up where the writer is like, I'll use someone who likes to do all these things and a white horse to ride through dreams. You might be someone like me. This is simply the blue color. This is, this makes me want to cry. This is the most beautiful drawing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. That's blue colored pencil. And white paper. Uh, and then she finally says, are you someone like me, a writer? Well, I would say, are you someone like me, an artist? Because this is the greatest work of art I've seen in a long, maybe ever. Someone like me, um... You know, I could talk about art in general right now. What do you mean? Well, if it, if I wasn't holding you and trying to like make this believable, <laughs> yeah, I could talk about this. But then it would be a different kind of show. That's true. You want to get Nana Bujo out here? I could get Nana Bujo out here. <laughs> All right. Um. Anyway, cause, well, here's my point. Uh, growing up, you know, and here's just the back cover illustration. Sunset with the dog. I, I can't say enough good things about this. Um, here's the thing to know, kids. Um, I'm not talking to the adults here. But if you're a kid watching this and you want to be an artist. When I was growing up, uh... All the art classes talked about artists, and they would talk about people in the past, like Picasso and Van Gogh and uh, Andy Warhol. Um, 
And these were all modern artists. And, um, oh, who's the other one? I, I, I've mocked him a number of times. Um, Van Gogh. Well, Van Gogh is ridiculously bad. But um, uh, education will make you think that you can't tell the difference between good art and bad art. Because they'll say, hey, look at this. This is Picasso. And it looks ridiculous. It's not, it doesn't give you any kind of emotional response. And they tell you you have to be educated to know and to appreciate what, what, it, what it is. You don't. It's not our problem to come ha meet art halfway. Good art will smack you in the face and change your life. Um, and especially before, while you're a kid, before you get corrupted by art, art teachers, you can tell what's good. By the time we get through college, people can't tell what's good. They'll spend millions of dollars, well, They'll buy stuff like, um, hey, boujou, Kaya. It's nice to see you. She said boo. Yeah, she's a ghost. Boo, Kaya. It's so nice to see you. You know, if you just got off the camera, I could kind of take over. I might do that in a moment. All right. Um, so you were saying about art? Yeah. So when you're a kid, don't let them make you change your mind about what you like. You are right. When you say that this is a better book than what your mom's checking out at the library because there are no pictures in her book, you're right. Trust your gut, but also know that good art is still out there and it's mostly in children's books. And there's a lot in like animation too. Not necessarily like um, artificial intelligence animation, and video game animation isn't that beautiful. But you can find some pretty cool stuff in cartoons. All right. Um, how about... Should I go get Nana Bougie? Yeah, why don't you go get Nana Bougie? All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to go sit over there. And uh, I might be back. My name is Emily Aubrey, and I will see you again. Gigawabamin, mean a wall. Thank you, Emily. That's all right. Okay, bonjour. It's time to start. Okay, that's... This is how we're gonna do this, Michael. <laughs> You're still on the thing. <laughs> <laughs> 